It's wedding season, your best mates, your family, your colleagues are getting hitched, you're invited. You're excited, but it's been a while since you've been to an event that formal or you've never been to one at all. Not to worry, that's exactly why I'm here today because in today's video, I'm going to share 5 different wedding outfits that you can wear as a guest. Let's go. So if you're new here, welcome to the Dapper Vault. My name is Dixon and I do men's fashion, grooming, and lifestyle content to help you dress and look your best life. Just to share some crazy numbers, 98% of you watching the channel aren't subscribed. So join the family by subscribing to the channel and help a brother out. It's free anyways. Alright, before I get into it, I want to share a couple of rules that you need to know before dressing up for a wedding. Rule number one when it comes to weddings is never, ever outdress the groom or the wedding party. It's their day, so let's be respectful here and avoid wearing any attention-grabbing outfits like a bright suit because that's only going to give you unnecessary attention. Rule number two, respect the dress code. Remember to always respect the dress code here. Never rock up to a wedding wearing slippers and shorts unless the bride and groom specifically says so. So a few common dress codes are black tie, black tie optional, semi-formal, cocktail or even tropical which you would typically see for a destination wedding. And in today's video, I'm going to be focusing more on black tie optional outfits. Rule number three, the fit. I think by now that you know that fit is king, so the assumptions here are the suit you're wearing is fitted to you perfectly. However, for those of you who are unsure how a suit should properly fit, check out this video here. Starting out with outfit number one, I'm calling it the classic and conservative look. In this outfit, I'm wearing a two-piece charcoal grey suit and what I love about this suit is definitely the versatility. Wear it for a wedding, wear it for business, with charcoal grey, you'll have yourself a sharp looking outfit. And true enough, this suit jacket is actually my staple go-to for the office. So with this outfit, I've paired it with a simple white dress shirt in a barrel cuff configuration together with a solid brown necktie. Shoes of choice, a super comfortable pair of dark brown double monk straps from Arden Teal with some matching charcoal socks. I've been wearing these shoes every single day for the past two weeks for an upcoming review, so stay tuned. No belts here. In my opinion, always skip the belt because the belt is going to cut you in half. As you can see here, having the beltless look is going to complement your overall silhouette. And not to forget the bare minimum accessories every guy needs to wear when it comes to wearing a suit, a tie piece, and a pocket square. I'm rocking this steel panda chronograph and of course a white pocket square in the presidential fold. As the name suggests, the look is incredibly conservative and very suitable for those of you who are unfamiliar with suits. But you gotta remember, nail the fit first and slowly build out the confidence of wearing a suit. Moving on to outfit number two, we have the suit separate. I personally love this look and it may be uncommon to see but the guys who pull this off are usually the ones who knows exactly what they're doing. And that's the best part about having an interchangeable wardrobe, the versatility of mixing and matching. So using the same charcoal grey pant from outfit number one, I'm pairing this with a navy blue blazer which is actually part of a full suit. So the difference here is this blazer has peak lapels which is seen as a more formal outfit as compared to the previous blazer which has notched lapels. So switching it up, I'm wearing a blue dress shirt with barrel cuffs. For the shoes, another pair of Arden Teals the black tassel loafer. As you can see, I'm going for a more modern sockless look. Moving on with the accessories, I decided to go with something more fun with the necktie, a grey micro pattern tie to complement the trousers. And to kick things up a notch, I decided to wear a pair of navy suspenders. I personally think suspenders, although not seen very often, is the most elegant and classic way to up your suit game. And of course, it's not for everyone, so if drawing attention to yourself is not your thing, don't do it. And lastly, to complete the look, a white pocket square with blue edges in the classic fold. And there you have it, the suit separate. Moving on to outfit number three, we have the three-piece suit. I'm sure most of you know what a three-piece suit is, but for those of you who don't, there's an additional waistcoat that's worn together with the suit that makes you look like a stud. Of course, the star of the outfit, a navy waistcoat with a matching navy blazer, which is actually from outfit number two. A three-piece suit is a level up in formality and to match that, I'm wearing a blue striped dress shirt with some French cuffs. And when it comes to French cuffs, you gotta remember your cufflinks. And the cuffling of choice here are these pair of gold cufflinks. Since the suit is so loud, I decided to tone things down with the accessories. So I'm wearing a medium blue micro pattern necktie together with a maroon pocket square with paisley patterns and a reverse fold. Since I'm wearing a waistcoat, I decided to skip the tie clip and opted for a maroon boutonniere 
to match the pocket square. And to tie the entire outfit together, I decided on a dark polka dotted socks with red and blue accents. Everything is intentionally thought out of. As you can see, that common pop of red across all the accessories really helps to tie everything together. Footwear of choice, a pair of brown double monk straps with gold buckles because you get a match of metals which is exactly why I decided to go with this Bambino with gold tones. Honestly, one of my favorite looks that's definitely more on the formal side, which almost matches up with the tux. So if you decide to buy or tailor a suit, always opt for the vest because that's going to give you more options. Wear it, don't wear it, it's up to you. Three outfits down, we have two to go. Moving on to outfit number four, we have the double-breasted suit. First up, I'm going to say if you don't own a suit, I would strongly advise against getting a double-breasted suit as your first suit. In general, I do feel a double-breasted suit should be a suit that's after your third and fourth suit and it's not for everyone because it draws a lot of attention to yourself but I gotta say, a double-breasted suit is a powerful suit and it really is like wearing a suit of armor. That is sick. I'm wearing a navy double-breasted suit and if you come closer, it's actually pinstriped. So for the dress shirt, I decided on a crisp white French calf shirt which I would strongly recommend if you ever decide to wear a double-breasted suit because you want to make sure that the formality matches. With the necktie, I decided to go with a royal blue tie with white dotted patterns and a classic white pocket square in a presidential fold to keep things simple. And to accessorize further, a white boutonniere to complement the pocket square and the tie. With the lower half, I decided to go with a pair of boulder socks together with a pair of brown oxfords. Definitely try this look if you have the chance. You'll never know, a double-breasted suit may look fire on you. Just remember to always fasten your buttons and always rock a necktie if you ever go double-breasted. Alright, last but certainly not the least, we have outfit number 5, the tuxedo. So I did a poll the whole of last week and 51% of you who participated actually chose the tuxedo as the go-to for a black tie optional wedding. Great taste. And when it comes to black tie optional, the host most often than not would encourage guests to wear a tuxedo. And some misconceptions that I need to clarify here is black tie optional is not slapping on a black suit with a black necktie and calling it a day. And dressing up in a tuxedo is about following the rules. And there's no room to get creative unless the dress code specifically states creative black tie. So the ensemble I have on is the classic tuxedo. So with the tuxedo, I opted for wider peaks and I'm sure some of you may notice that the lapel has a slight sheen effect to it and that's because it's made out of silk. And another difference that you may realize is the tuxedo jacket only has one button as compared to the other jackets worn on the other outfits which is how tuxedos are meant to be. Dress shirt of choice is the same French cuff from outfit number 4 with a pair of black cufflinks. And of course, with black tie, you gotta have yourself a black bow tie. And for the pocket square, there's nothing more complimentary and classic than the white presidential pocket square. I'm also wearing a cummerbund, which is this pleated waist sash, which is typically worn with a tuxedo that actually complements the wearer because it hides the belly. Shoes of choice, a pair of black capital oxfords with matching socks. Decided to skip the timepiece here because I don't own a black dress watch yet. But keep it classy and always remember to keep your medals matched and no Apple Watches, please. So that's it, gents. Five outfits that's for sure going to make you look on point for a black tie optional wedding. Remember, you don't need to wear exactly what I'm wearing here. These are just guidelines, so change up the accessories to something that's more personal to you. Just remember the basics and I'm sure you'll be looking dapper as. Alright, gents. Thanks so much for watching. If you find this video helpful, give me one of these so YouTube will recommend this to other good-looking lads out there. And if you enjoy this type of content, hit that subscribe button so I can continue to create content for you guys. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't ever miss a video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. As always, stay dapper.